We're also talking about this um, this amazing report by mm. pest control experts who say they are dealing with a record number of fabric-eating moths across the three counties. And if you've not had the problem, you're thinking, what's the fuss? These things can eat you out of house and home. One text says, and you're very quick with the text, mate, thank you. It says, Rob, my carpets are being eaten by these maggot-looking larvae. They stink like bad eggs, and when I pick them up, they, when I pick them up, they stink like bad eggs. Any idea what they are and how do I get rid of them? These will be the little moth larvae things. That's what you've got. You've got an infestation. And they, I tell you what, they will eat the carpet. A huge number of fabric-eating moths are causing problems across beds, hearts and bucks. Now, pest control experts say the number of cases they're dealing with across the three counties has literally gone through the roof. There's loads of them. The moths will attack anything. I mean, anything made of material, including clothes, curtains and carpets, even shack piles. Graham Warren is a moth expert at Moth and Home, uh, and home Care Company, Carousel Direct. Graham, very good afternoon to you. Good afternoon to you, sir. Now, I tell How you, are you? I'm very well. I tell you what, though, on the text, this is going balloon, b- do lally at the moment, people commenting on this. W- where are all these moths coming from? They're generally coming from Europe. There's no one particular reason why we're getting so many. We're in the second consecutive year of a moth pandemic. Partly it's global warming. Partly it's, at the moment, very warm and moist. And boy, are we moist in the last few weeks here. Uh, damp conditions. And also the, the general theory is that most of us have got more clothes than we had before. We don't wear the same garment as often as we may have done in the past. And each garment does not get disturbed or shaken or taken out of the wardrobe so often and you don't necessarily know you've got the problem until too late i didn't so you have to give your clothes a good airing you do and sometimes grandmothers and is how they used to treat things some of us have forgotten and as much as anything it's a learning curve it's being ever vigilant to look out for the telltale signs which are the larvae, because it's the larvae as they hatch, it's it's the little creatures that do all the damage, which explains why you get very small holes in your garments, because they themselves are small. They need to eat to grow into fully grown moths. So when you close the doors of the wardrobe, that's their absolutely prime uh, breeding conditions. And we've got now we've got moths more or less throughout the year. It used to be a couple of years ago, one or two seasons. Now it's more or less throughout the year. And these are all, and these are all immigrant moths. Well, doesn't surprise me. They are. Have you? Re- are. I mean, have you seen a big number, a, a number of, of cases? Come people coming to you saying, "I need help, Graham. Help now." We are we are inundated. We're trying to carry out a fantastic service here because we've got people in tears because moths eat natural garments and natural fibres. So all the things we like and cherish the most are the ultimate target for the moth and we've seen a huge increase there's three types of moth clothes moth carpet moth and food moth and the carpet moth is growing as well but the clothes moth is by far the biggest issue so look just let's start with the basics here again Graham. Yeah. how do you I mean, apart from sort of getting out a lovely jacket or, or a dress from your wardrobe and seeing it's, it's full of holes how do you know if you've got a problem with moths open the doors of the wardrobe Thoroughly look inside and look for the larvae. You can have the larvae for up to two years and not know you've got it. They look like, in terms of size and colour and shape, a small grain of white rice. That's the telltale sign, obviously, as well as things, moths flying around in the room. The other really useful thing that we've done here, we won an award last year at the British Invention Show. We've created the Carousel Moth Map, which you can have a look on www.sosmoths.com. Right. Put in your postcode. Give it a few seconds and download uh, a huge inf- amount of information will be downloaded to show you where you live if you're in a high moth infestation area. We're checking that as we and speak. If, and if you are, then we at Council have got all the different remedies no, to help you with that problem. Other services available. So how, how can you bring them under control? Because I, 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 I've got some nice clothes, obviously. Cause I'm, you know, Italian. Of course. And I've, and I've got some anti-moth devices. So these little, they're not moth balls. I've, I got it from a very famous shop. And apparently you stick it in your wardrobe this stuff on like you put it in there and it kills the moths yes well we have got a whole variety of different types of moth repellent uh because for the different types of moth we have the answer for the three or four different types and also where the moth is found sometimes it's in wardrobes sometimes it's in cupboards and drawers 
Uh, other times it's under the sofa, under the chairs, because you don't move the heavy will, furniture. Will they too eat often. chairs and s- s- they they go for carpets, curtains, and upholstery. That's a different moth. That's above. a different moth. So you've got to be aware that there are three types of moth: clothes moth, carpet moth, food moth. What, one text says, "My carpets are being eaten by these maggot-looking larvae. They stink like bad eggs when I pick them up." Well, then they need carouseldirect.com. We've got the answer for that. Have we they have got, have they got, what spray. have they got? What does it they, sound? Does it sound like a carpet moth? That is a carpet moth. Oh, man totally alive. Different, totally, totally different to the clothes moth. So you've got to be ever diligent. If you've had them once, the likelihood is that you'll probably get them again. As long as you're prepared for it and you get sound advice, which we can offer, then in theory you can combat the problem. And why don't people use routinely use mothballs anymore? They had a certain they had a certain attraction about them. Those mothballs. Our grannies used to use them all the time. Yeah, well, they they used to. They contain something called naphthalene, which is now no longer allowed to be sold. It was extremely pungent smell and put a lot of people off. And now technology has moved on. How would you we how have... do you describe that smell? Because I, I, I remember opening drawers in my indeed in my. My grandmother, <laughs> and a very strong smell. I think, let's say it's a smell that you could never forget. It lingered, did it not? It was a really strong, almost unpleasant smell. Um, now, the moth repellents are probably a lot more, uh, they, they work a lot better, but they generally, they are infused with lavender, so it's a pleasant smell. Plus, lavender is also a natural moth repellent. Graham, pleasure talking to you. And you. Graham Thank Warren, you. Warren, a moth expert at uh, Moth and Hel- Home Care Company, Carousel Direct. So I'll tell you what, these things, if you get them, they'll eat you. They'll eat your clothes, they'll eat your carpets, and they'll eat your curtains. Although some people's curtains, judging by the state of them, could do with a good, you know, eating up.